Introduction Today is a sunny day. Vishal is in the garden to enjoy the day. Suddenly, he looks at a flower and he likes it. As he approaches the flower, he just withdraws his hand in a fraction of a second. What happened to him? Let's see more closely. When he touches the stem of the flower, the thorn on it pinches him and sensors detect stimuli present below the skin and this stimuli passes to central nervous system and in response, the skeletal muscles contract and he withdraws his hand. So, throughout this module, we learn neural control and coordination. Objectives At the end of this lesson, you will be able to Describe human neural system Explain structure and functions of neuron Explain generation and conduction of nerve impulse Explain transmission of impulses Describe central neural system Explain reflex action and reflex arc Explain structure and working of human eye and human ear Neural system Neural system controls and coordinates the activities of the body. Neuron is the structural and functional unit of neural system. It carries information from one part of the body to another. The nervous system of invertebrates is smaller with fewer neurons as compared to invertebrates. Human neural system Human neural system is grouped into two parts. Central nervous system, peripheral nervous system. Central nervous system can be further divided into brain and spinal cord. Peripheral nervous system includes cranial nerves and spinal nerves. Nerve fibers are of two types. They are afferent fibers and efferent fibers. Afferent fibers. These fibers carry impulses from organs or tissues such as sense organs to central nervous system. Efferent fibers. These fibers carry impulses from central nervous system to organs or tissues such as muscles and glands. Peripheral nervous system. Peripheral nervous system has two divisions that are somatic neural system and autonomic neural system. Somatic neural system transmits impulses from CNS to voluntary organs whereas autonomic neural system from CNS to involuntary organs such as cardiac muscles. Autonomic neural system can be further classified into parasympathetic neural system and sympathetic neural system. Parasympathetic division control functions such as inhibiting heart rate, constricting pupils etc. whereas Sympathetic division often has opposite effect such as speed up heart rate, dilate pupils, etc. Neuron as structural and functional unit of neural system. A neuron has three major parts, cell body, dendrites and axon. These specialized cells are responsible for receiving and transmitting information. The cell body contains cytoplasm, cell organelles and Nissel's granules. They are also called granular bodies. Dendrites are extensions from the cell body. They receive neural impulse from receptors and several other neurons and then transmit impulse towards cell body. A long fiber which transmits impulse away from the cell body is called axon. Each axon ends as bulb-like structure called synaptic knob which possesses neurotransmitters. There are three types of neurons. They are unipolar, bipolar and multipolar. Unipolar, only one axon is present. Bipolar, one axon and one dendrite is present. Multipolar, one axon and two or more dendrites are present. There are two types of axons myelinated and non-myelinated. Myelinated axons are enclosed by Schwann cells 
that form of fatty layer called myelin sheath and the gap between two consecutive myelin sheath is called nodes of Ranvier. Whereas in non-myelinated axons, there is no myelin sheath around axon. Generation and Conduction of Nerve Impulse A nerve impulse is a signal that is transmitted along dendrites or axons due to ions moving across voltage-gated channels in the neuron's plasma membrane. Due to the electrical voltage, the voltage-gated channels open and close, so we can conclude that they are affected by electrical charge around them. A charge difference is maintained between the inside and outside of the cell when a neuron is at rest. By active transport through sodium-potassium pumps, this charge difference is produced and maintained. The pump sends sodium ions out of the cell and bring potassium ions into the cell. While other channels allow some potassium ions flow back out of the cell, whereas the sodium ions cannot easily get back in to replace the lost positive charges. It results that the exterior of the cell has a net positive charge and the interior has a net negative charge. The charge difference between the interior and exterior of the cell is called the resting membrane potential. Now, when a stimulus disturbs the plasma membrane on a dendrite, a nerve impulse begins causing opening of sodium channels. Sodium ions flow into the cell and lessen the charge difference at that location. If the charge is enough, it will cause other voltage-gated sodium channels near it to get open. As so many sodium ions flow into the cell at that location, causing the membrane depolarized with inside the cell having a net positive charge and the outside of the cell having a net negative charge. This also affects neighboring voltage-gated sodium channels, causing them to open and move depolarization along the membrane. This moving depolarization is called an action potential. Changes behind the action potential restore the resting membrane potential. The voltage-gated sodium channels close and voltage-gated potassium channels open due to which a rapid flow of potassium ions out of the cell occurs and repolarizing the membrane again so that inside of the cell is again negative and outside of the cell is again positive. Sodium-potassium pump restores the resting membrane potential and re-establishes the correct concentration of sodium and potassium ions inside and outside of the cell. Transmission of Impulses To transmit a signal between two neurons, an electrical impulse must be transferred over a synapse. A synapse is a junction across which an impulse passes from axon terminal to a neuron. It is formed by the presynaptic and postsynaptic neuron. As the action potential flows down the axon, when it reaches to the axon terminal, calcium channels open through which calcium ions move into the neuron. After that, neuron makes and stores neurotransmitters in vesicles. As calcium binds to the vesicles, the vesicles carry neurotransmitter towards the presynaptic membrane. When the vesicles come in contact with the axon terminal membrane, the neurotransmitter is released into the synaptic left. It is the gap between the presynaptic and postsynaptic neuron. Now, the neurotransmitter diffuses across the synaptic left and binds to the receptors present on the postsynaptic neuron. It activates the receptors on postsynaptic neuron and then receptors allow sodium ions in the neuron by facilitated diffusion causing an action potential in the postsynaptic membrane. The released neurotransmitters diffuse back into the synaptic left and vesicles recycle some neurotransmitters. Central Neural System Central Nervous System is a processing center for the nervous system. It is covered in cranial cavity. It has three-layer connective tissue membranes. 
The outer layer is dura mater. The middle layer is arachnoid matter and the inner layer is pia matter. These layers are called cranial meninges. The space between pia matter and arachnoid matter is filled with cerebrospinal fluid. The human brain can be divided into three parts, forebrain, midbrain and hindbrain. Forebrain The forebrain is the most anterior and prominent part of the human brain. It consists of cerebrum, thalamus and hypothalamus. The cerebral cortex forms the thin outer layer of the forebrain called cerebrum. Cerebrum consists of two large masses called cerebral hemispheres, one on the left and one on the right side. The cerebral cortex covers the cerebrum. A thick bundle of nerve fibers called corpus callosum connects cerebral hemispheres. Cerebral cortex accounts for more than 80% of the brain's total mass. It is responsible for thinking, language use, creative center, etc. It also controls voluntary movement, processes sensory information. The thalamus is a large mass of grey matter buried under the cerebral cortex. Thalamus consists of a pair of egg-shaped structure that route information from sense receptors to the processing centers of the brain in the cerebral cortex. Just under the thalamus, a pea-sized structure is present called hypothalamus. It helps in regulating many vital body functions such as hunger and thirst, fluid concentrations, temperature of the body, reproductive process, etc. The limbic system is a group of interconnected structures that includes the amygdala, hippocampus, parts of the thalamus and hypothalamus. Midbrain Midbrain lies above the hindbrain and contains nerve pathways connected with the forebrain. The midbrain performs an important role in automatic movements of the eye muscles. Parts of the midbrain make up the brain stem. The reticular formation is web-like network of neurons that rises from the hindbrain and passes through the midbrain to the thalamus in the forebrain. It plays a key role in regulating states of attention, alertness and arousal. Hindbrain The lowest part of the brain is called hindbrain. The hindbrain includes medulla, pons and cerebellum. The medulla and pons contain sensory neurons that transmit information from the spinal cord to the forebrain. Medulla regulates the basic life functions such as heartbeat and respiration. Pawns regulate the state of wakefulness and sleep. Brainstem connects the spinal cord to higher regions of the brain. Reflex action and reflex arc. A reflex action is an immediate response to a stimulus by the nervous system. In humans, the withdrawal of hand from a hot object is an example of reflex action. Another example is the straightening of leg when tendon just below the knee is stabbed. Let's examine the reflex arc in more detail. First, specialized sensory fibers of the skin detect the painful stimulus and pass this information to nerve cells in the spinal cord. The information is carried by single sensory neuron without any intervening synaptic connections. The sensory fibers enter in the spinal cord and synapse upon interneurons within the spinal cord. These interneurons in turn synapse upon the motor neurons through which skeletal muscles are controlled. In this case, the flexor muscles in front of the arm are instructed to contract while the extensor muscles in the back of the arm relax. By the excitation of motor neurons and inhibiting others, the interneurons control muscle pair to generate movement. Sensory Reception and Processing Eye Human eyes are roughly spherical organs located 
in the eye sockets or orbits. Parts of an eye. The wall of the human eye consists of three layers. The outermost is durable fibrous layer called sclera, the white of the eye, and the cornea through which light enters into the interior of the eye. The middle layer consists of three parts choroid, ciliary body, and iris. Choroid is the largest portion of the middle layer. The ciliary body contains smooth muscle fibers that control the shape of the lens, permitting us to focus on incoming light. The iris is the colored portion of the eye visible through the cornea. The dark opening in the iris is called pupil. It allows light to penetrate the eye. The smooth muscles of the iris regulate the diameter of the pupil. The innermost layer of the eye is retina. Two types of photoreceptors on retina are rods and cones. The rods are sensitive to low light, whereas cones operate only in brighter light. The axons of the ganglion cell in the retina unite at the back of the eye to form optic nerve. As this area contains no photoreceptors, it is insensitive to light. It is also termed as the blind spot. A tiny pit is located in the macula of the retina and is called fovea. It provides the clearest vision of all as mostly cones are located on fovea. The space between cornea and the lens is called aqueous chamber and it contains aqueous humor. The space between the lens and the retina is called vitreous chamber and it contains vitreous humor. Mechanism of vision Light reflected from an object enters into an eye through cornea and lens and then the light is focused on retina and generates action potential in rod and cones. Eye contains photopigments formed of opsin and retinol. Light changes the structure of opsin due to which permeability of the membrane also gets changed. It creates potential difference in the photoreceptor cell which generates action potential in the ganglion cells through the bipolar cells. These potential are transmitted to visual cortex of the brain through optic nerve. The impulses are analyzed in the cortex and image is formed on the retina. The ear. The human ear is a special organ. It serves two functions. It detects sound and it detects body position, enabling us to maintain balance. Anatomy of the ear. The ear consists of three portions, the outer ear, the middle ear and the inner ear. The outer ear. The outer ear consists of an irregularly shaped piece of cartilage covered by skin, the pinna and the earlobe, a flap of skin that hangs down from pinna. The outer ear also consists of a short tube, the external auditory canal, which transmits sound waves to the middle ear. The external auditory canal is linked by skin which contains sweat glands that produce earwax. Earwax traps foreign particles and contains a natural antibiotic substance that may reduce ear infections. The middle ear. The middle ear lies within the skull. The eardrum or tympanic membrane separates the middle from the external auditory canal. There are three muscular bones inside the middle ear called ossicles. They are malleus, incus and stapes. The stapes are attached to the oval window of the cochlea. The middle ear activity opens to the pharynx via eustachian tube. It helps in equalizing pressure in the middle ear. Anatomy of ear. The inner ear. The inner ear consists of fluid-filled tubes in the temporal bone of the skull. The bony tubes filled with perilymph within the bony labyrinth cellular tubes are present called membranous labyrinth filled with endolymph. 
The bony labyrinth has three major sections: the cochlea, the semicircular canals, and and the vestibule connected to cochlea and semicircular canals. Cochlea consists of raisinous and basilar membrane. The oval window is present behind the stapes and round window is bulging outwards in the inner ear. The organ of Cody is present on the scala media side on side of the basilar membrane. It contains hair cells that act as hearing receptors. The end of hair cell is connected with the afferent nerve fibers. Above the hair cells, a membrane called tectorial membrane is present. The vestibular apparatus consists of semicircular canals and otolith organ. Semicircular canals are three ring-like structures set at right angles to one another, and a bulb-like portion at the base of the canals called ampulla, which contains projections called crista ampullaris. Whereas there are two otolith organs such as utricle and saccule. which contain projections called macula mechanism of hearing the sound waves enter through the outer ear and approach eardrum in response to the sound waves the eardrum vibrates and these vibrations are transmitted to these ear ossicles it includes malus incus and stapes and then to the oval window through the oval window Vibrations are passed to the fluid in the cochlea due to which waves are generated in the limb. The generated waves produce ripples in the basilar membrane. The movement in the basilar membrane causes the hair cell to bend against tectorial membrane due to which nerve impulses are generated and that they are transmitted to the auditory cortex of the brain via auditory nerves. In the brain impulses are analyzed and then the sound is recognized did you know the malus incus and stapes are the smallest bones in the human body and are full size at birth temporal bone is the densest bone of the body human eyes can process 36000 bits of information every hour summary Let us summarize what we have learned. Neural system controls and coordinates the activities of the body. Human neural system is grouped into central and peripheral nervous system. Central nervous system can be divided into brain and spinal cord whereas peripheral nervous system is divided into somatic neural system and autonomic neural system. The major parts of neurons are cell body dendrites and axon a nerve impulse is a signal that is transmitted along dendrites or axons of a neuron for transmission of signals between two neurons an electrical impulse must be transferred over a synapse the human brain can be divided into forebrain midbrain and hindbrain The forebrain is the most anterior part of the brain. It consists of cerebrum, thalamus and hypothalamus. The hindbrain includes medulla, pons and cerebellum. A reflex action is an immediate response to a stimulus by the nervous system. Human eye and human ear are the sensory organs.